Hello and welcome to Unit 3. I have a mostly paperless, a paperless classroom. And uh, Unit 3 is broken down into three different sections. Move your files into Drive, make fewer class copies, and bring your quizzes online using Google Forms. Now, just a quick heads up, if you want to get this PowerPoint, just click the link below in the description. Uh, it'll take you to my Teachers Pay Teachers store. And um, if you're a district looking for a boot camp similar to this, you can also click a link in the description uh, for my uh, Google for uh, my Google uh, Education uh, training site. Okay, let's get started. All right, so first off, move your files into Drive. Uh, this is a video clip that I think should be watched in entirety. Now, Google Drive is like one of the main focuses of a level one certification. Now, you can find this video on my YouTube channel. If you have the PowerPoint, it's embedded right into the it's embedded right into the PowerPoint. But um, definitely watch this and actually watch all ten tasks. I, I would say. Okay, understanding cloud storage. Okay, here's a cloud storage. It's basically a computer connected to the internet that saves information by uploading files. So your information is stored in the internet, basically. Cloud storage is available through internet connection, and you can access this information whenever you upload a file into the cloud. So, for example, if um, I have, uh, let, let's say, a, um, a Word document, I can upload it to my Google Drive, and wherever I go, if I uh, log on to my Google Drive, there it is. In the old days, I used to have like a Word document and you would save it to your computer and it would be stuck on your computer. This way, when you save it to the cloud storage, wherever you go, as long as you connect to the internet, you'll be able to access that file. So remember, you can access the information that you uploaded to the cloud by logging into your account. So whenever you store information in um, uh, Google Drive, Whenever you log into Google Drive, you'll be able to access it. And listen, Google Drive works both offline and online. Now, if you're using Google Drive, make sure to enable offline storage for those times when you don't have internet connection. You don't have to enable offline storage, but uh, you probably should. With offline storage, any changes you make will be automatically saved the next time you connect to the internet. So, again, you don't need uh, this extension for uh, the certification exam, but... Um, Here's, here's the extension if you like, right? Um, I have it for you. It's uh, You just click right here, and it'll take you to the uh, Google Docs offline. Okay, about, about Google Drive and Cloud Storage. So what do we know? You can access Drive from anywhere, as long as you have internet connection, right? File storage. It's uh, paperless. Okay, so you store files. Google Drive is paperless. Any changes you make... While um, in Google Drive, it'll be saved, or any or matter of fact, any uh, changes you make in any of the Google uh, apps or any of the Google documents will all be saved. And you'll be able to uh, manage folders within your Drive. I'll show you some cool stuff there. Now, let's meet Google Drive. It's a safe place where you can store documents, slideshows, spreadsheets, pictures, videos, much, much more. Drive is essentially a virtual USB stick that can access files from around the world if you're connected to the internet and remember even if you're offline as well now Google Drive allows users to drag and drop content which I'll show you how to do next so you can drag you can drag content from your uh, from your desktop and drop it into your Google Drive like I said I'll show you how to do that um, you can also do it on uh, mo mobile devices as well now any type of file can be stored and a huge uh, and a huge number can be viewed and edited including files from Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, PDF, movies, photos, etc. So you can store any type of file, but most of them can actually be viewed and edited. So uploading files and folders to Google Drive, right? So what are the two options for uploading fo uh, files and folders to Google Drive? You can drag and drop, which we'll do coming up. And you can go to Google Drive and just click New, okay? You can add and upload files from your computer right to your Google Drive. So here's the drag and drop. I want you to take a look over here. Here's a file I have. On, this is my desktop. Here's a file I have on the outside. So what I do is I first select this file. So I'll click it here, and then I'll just hold it down and dra and just drop it right here. This is where it says my drive. I just drop it in right here. Um, and and take a look. You can hold it over. When you hold it over the the area, it'll like a box will, will pop up here, and it'll look something like this. And you just let go, and you've you know, uploaded files from the drag and drop method. Now, the drag and drop method is just one way. Another way to upload files is uh, you go to your Google Drive. I'm in Google Drive, and I click New. Okay, remember, I'm on my drive. I click New, and then here you're going to see this thing pop up. So then you could click File Upload if you have a single file, 
or you can click folder upload if you want to upload a folder but it's very simple one or two steps so Google Drive in my school here's some things that, that, that you might do you can create a folder for each of your classes and then share the folder with your students use color coding um, I can color code my folders for the school personal and professional development um, I could store pictures and videos in Google Drive which I which I, that's something that I do as well I can uh, add multimedia to Google Drive and then share those items with links for for anybody I can share with links for can view can edit we'll go over all that as, as we move forward all right so organizing folders you should color code your folders and you should create a bunch of different folders you want to stay organized so maybe you have one for lesson plans another folder another folder for grad school one for the chess club if you're an eighth grade math teacher and then you're also doing algebra a folder for personal stuff family special education folder you want to stay organized and color code so this is um, just an infographic I, I, I have for you um, you know it's uh, basically talks about uh, cloud storage and uh, you know meeting Google Drive alright lesson check you can add content to Google Drive by dragging and dropping files directly into your Google Drive is that true or false of course it's true right we, we just did that you can share and color code folders in your Google Drive is that true can you share and color code yes that's true right we talked about color coding but we didn't talk, really talk about sharing you can share any file or any folder you have in drive you can share I can upload the following to Google Drive so what can you upload to Google Drive Microsoft Word PowerPoint Excel movie files photo files PDFs if you go back in this PowerPoint and you go I don't know a couple slides back you'll notice that I, that I wrote you can upload any file okay and you can edit most of them Google Drive is accessible anywhere in the world even if you lose internet con connection okay all you need is Google is a Google account to access your information from the cloud and I think early on I, I, I said something you can access uh, the cloud anywhere you want all you need is internet connection but you can also what you can also do it without internet connection right we talked about downloading that works offline okay second section make fewer class copies here's another video okay um, you can find this on my YouTube channel it says here watch the video clip items 1 and 2 so you want to do create a Google Doc and share a Google Doc you're welcome to watch the whole thing but a lot of these things here are covered in uh, level 2 um, commenting you might want to watch inserting items listen you know probably the the more depth the, the more depth of knowledge you have the better off you are but just focus on 1 and 2 alright the biggest difference between other pro productivity software in G Suite is the concept of a live document. Okay, in G Suite for Education, there are live documents, um, which is basically a group of individuals can work on a document at the same time, and 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 any change that's made will automatically be seen by everybody that that's currently working on the document. Let me go back real quick. So there's only one version of a document, and edits are made in real time. Okay when you or someone you're collaborating with makes a change makes a, a change to the document those changes are automatically saved uh, in the same place for everyone to see so any change that any person makes is automatically saved in real time and everybody gets to see it each of your students can either work on a single class document or they have the option of making their own personal documents right so if they, if they don't want to collaborate that's fine they can just make a copy and work by themselves so meet Google Docs suite here's just an overview of some tools right uh, Google Docs is a word processor. It's used for like collaborative note taking during lectures and videos. Sheets is a spreadsheet. Think about Excel. You can use that to track larger project uh, projects. Slides. That's like a presentation, right? It has slide decks to presentation. One slide deck can uh, showcase uh, stages of growth, for example. Forms are used for online surveys and quizzes. You can collect parent contact information. Drawings are graphics and images, and um, word sorts instead of cut and paste activities okay convert files to Google Apps for education right so you have to convert files so you have Microsoft Word PowerPoint Excel PDF you, you can take files and convert them and um, as a matter of fact these files can be easily converted within a uh, drive those are the Microsoft uh, files and um, you can set it where anytime you upload a file it's automatically converted 
to uh, you know a G Suite for Education Google Apps. So I'm going to show you to do that next. So this time when you upload a file, it's going to automatically convert it so that you can work on it with a, a, a Google Apps. Um, so here are the tasks that you need to be able to do to become a Google Certified Educator. These are the tasks they're going to test you on, and these are quick links here if you have the PowerPoint. You just click them, and it'll take you to it'll take you to sections of my video where you specifically I specifically teach you how to create a doc upload files and things like that so I just want to heads up to each of these each of these tasks were covered in previous videos so if you see just click link here I've already covered them in probably the the, the opening video or something like that so now let's say you want to create a doc okay here's what you do you go to new okay and then this thing will pop up here so once you click new so I'm within drive so to create a doc from within drive I click new this pops up and then you can select anything you want you can create a Google Doc or Google Sheet slides a form a drawing just select anyone you want here a site maps drawings just whatever you want so real quickly select new and then pick the one you want um, to convert files upon upload this is tricky here okay um, first enter your Google Drive and then click the gear setting so this time when you upload a file so let's say you upload a Microsoft Word file and you want to automatically convert that to a Google Doc here's what you do you have to go in your drive and click this little gear icon that's always the settings the gear is the settings icon and then this window is gonna pop up take a look at this window and you see where it says convert uploads you just gotta check that box right there and click done right so and it says here next a window appears and you just gotta check this little box and anytime you upload a file like let's say you upload an Excel file it'll automatically convert that to a, a Google Sheet and, and, it, and it'll keep the original version as well okay to share files very very easy so select the file you wanna share so for example here are some files I have right I select the file so I click this right here and then I go to this little person with the plus sign. That always means share. So it's a, it's a share icon. It has a person with a plus. And then from there you have to enter the email of the person you want to share with. There's a lot of different ways to share. I'm going to go over that next too. Um, whether it be by a link, email, social media. Okay, these are older docs videos. They're supplemental and they go at a slower pace. You really don't have to watch them, but if you're very, very confused, watch them. Okay, you got to put the time in to, to pass this exam. So if, you know, I, I, I'm doing this on, on, on YouTube and I know I'm going really, really fast and everything like that. I'm just doing that because I know you guys don't want to stay with me for, you know, 13 sections here. So I'm going very, very fast, but, you know, you can always go on my YouTube channel. I have tons and tons of Google Certified Educator Level 1 training, okay? Here they are. You can find them on my channel. Okay, so to create a Google Doc, okay, you can do it from three different places. You can do it, you can just go to the web page. That means I type in googledocs.com, it'll probably be the first one, and it'll take you there. You can do it from your drive, okay? From your drive, you just go to new and you and you pick uh, you know, Google Docs. And there's something called the Google Apps icon. You'll find this, it looks like nine little boxes here if you click on this thing it's in the corner of your drive it'll also take you to you know google uh google docs and things like that so any one of them but the one you want to focus on the one the place you want to live is your drive you want to do everything from google drive that's where you should start google drive this is where this is where you want to be you can do web page but listen the google app icon that's also found in drive so drive is where you want to be so there's different ways you can share a Google document, okay? You can open a file, and on the top right, you'll find the share icon. You can right-click right, uh, right -click a file within Drive. It'll show you how to share. And you can just click on the file from within Drive that I had shown you previously. So I'll go back to that one, like this way here. You just click on, you just click this file, and you click on this, uh, this the share icon, and it'll let you share. You can right-click. This thing will pop up as well. And um, this thing right here is the is the the uh, uh, what do you call it? I what it's called. Here you go, Google Apps icon. So you can always find this right here, and this will help you get to whatever Google app you want. So you can click this as well. So that's the Google Apps icon. Now, just a heads up here with these videos. Okay, these videos cover this slide this slide this slide and this one 
okay so if you watch the videos I'll go a, l a little more in depth so you might be here right now and um, hold on a second you might look at this video be a little confused you might look at this slide and be a little confused but it's actually part of that video so I'm just going over it again I'm just doing this really quick okay again this this right here is part of one of those four videos I showed you right there's different sharing options you can share how you can share a file through email you can share a file through links and you can share a file through social media okay this this slide itself has a, a you know a video sharing access once you share a file with somebody you have to enable them access okay you share a file with somebody the person you share a file with that's called a collaborator now do you want this collaborator to be able to make changes and share it if you do want that then give them can edit when you share with a collaborator do you want them to only be able to make comments then you click can comment okay do you want to share with somebody and have them only view and and they can't make any changes then you click can view so I want you to look at the bottom right here okay the bottom right see here okay you click this little it looks like a pencil so you click this little icon and it'll you know it'll let you choose the sharing access you want right now I have it on can edit but you can choose can comment or can view so this little box in the corner allows you to choose the sharing access keys to a paperless uh, keys to paperless collaboration what steps uh, what are the steps to complete and share um, and collaborate on word documents with other department members so these, these you know this is trying to give you a, a real life situation first upload the file to Google Drive and convert it to an editable Google Doc you could uh, you should change your upload settings so that any word doc uh, you know that's uploaded will convert automatically right that's what we said you go inside you go to the gear icon and click converts automatically um, use the share button right to share button how do you do that you click the file you want and at the top right you'll see a person with a little plus sign that's always the share icon and sharing finding the share button is very easy here's another way let's say um, here this person Mrs. Styles wants to assess students factual knowledge and ask open-ended questions what should she do well you could use Google Forms for factual questions you know she could ask multiple choice check boxes drop down and she could also use a paragraph style uh, uh, questions for open-ended because open-ended you want students to write in and, and, and you know really go in depth so you know if she wants to assess knowledge use Google Forms factual questions would be multiple choice um, open-ended questions would be paragraph style also uh, you could do the same thing uh, you know you can find a solution with Google Docs here you know you could draft all the questions share the document as a view only and then allow students to make copies of uh, the document that you shared and then they could write on it and, and solve however they want so you know there's you know if you have a problem usually there's more than one tool that that can you know have the answer so these are more supplemental videos okay they go at a slower pace these are older videos I have alright but you know if if you really want to get an in, in, in depth understanding you could you know go back and review them it's supplemental I mean if you watch the, the, the first video on Google Drive and the, the other one on Google Docs you really don't need these six but if you're completely lost you know you can go back for it and listen sometimes it's best to, to just keep you know just keep moving forward and uh, you know keep moving forward with the training and as you go forward you know you'll learn some stuff from, from you know uh, from a previous unit and things like that like uh, here's what I say like if somebody wants to learn how to play soccer I can give them a, a book on, on how to um, you know here are the rules of soccer here's how soccer is played and they probably won't understand anything now if I take that person I just put them on the field and just say go out there and play soccer they're probably going to learn how to play soccer just from, you know, going out there, making mistakes, pressing buttons, uh, you know, uh, you know, just uh, going out there and just, you know, making mistakes and playing with everybody. So with, with uh, you know, with this Google Certified Educator exam, the best way to prepare is to go out there and actually try all these things. You've got to go out there. You've got to try things, get confused, make mistakes. You've got to go on the field, you know, basically. You can't just stand in the back and, and, and watch this PowerPoint. You've got to go out there and try it for yourself. Here's just another infographic. And pause this video just uh, you know basically reviews this section so here we go lesson check Microsoft Office documents are compatible with Google Drive true very yes true uh, which uh, which of the choices below are options when sharing a Google document what are some options we said we said edit we said view and we said comment we did not say anything about create what are the key benefits of using the Google Docs suite what are the key benefits select all that apply 
well, there's there's only ever one version of a document, meaning you don't have to compile all different versions. In the old days, you would have to save a copy of a Word document and send it to somebody else, and they would save it and save it, and there's all different copies. Not here. Also, you can easily share documents using a link, a URL, instead of attaching it to an email. Much, much easier. Saves time. If you have a file saved in your desktop, what steps would you take to be able to edit it using Google Docs? So let's say you have a file on your desktop and you want to edit it using Google Docs. What do you do? You upload the, the document from your desktop, right? You can use drag and drop and um, use the built-in feature to automatically convert it, right? We said to use the, 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 you know, use that gear icon, click the gear icon, and then check off uh, converts automatically. All right, last section, bring quizzes uh, uh, bring your qu bring your quizzes uh, using online Google Forms. I think it should be bring your quizzes online using Google Forms. Yeah, bring your quizzes online using Google Forms. All right. So Google Forms, the main purpose of Google Forms is to collect uh, data and then analyze it. Mainly to collect, though. Um, one great way to use Google Forms is to create a quiz as a, as a quick assessment. So you can use Forms to create quizzes. These quizzes are great for exit tickets. Forms can also act as surveys, which is, I think, its main function. Um, you can collect family emails on back-to-school night. You can get information for uh, clubs. Okay, watch the entire video. You have to watch this entire video because it, I go over every task that you have to know. Creating a form, sharing a form, sending a form. This is on my YouTube channel. You have to watch this, okay? If you really want to be prepared and, and, and you know be a master of Google Forms, watch this video. It's embedded in the PowerPoint here, but like I said, it's on the, it's on the uh, YouTube channel. So what are some uses of Google Forms? Remember, exit tickets. You can do a quick formative assessment, like a quick quiz. You can use it for surveys, and you could actually flip the classroom because you can flip a classroom by embedding a video on a Google Form and then um, you know, asking some questions about it and, and putting some more information out there. So you can embed videos as well. Okay, be able to perform these following tasks. Okay, they're all on that video that I showed. These are just quick links if you want to get to it you, you know, really quick. And not watch the whole eight, nine minute video. It'll take you right to that part of the video. And uh, each task was covered in the previous video. Okay, to create a Google Form, just like creating a Google, a Google Doc, right? Go to New. And then you would come down here. You would have to go to More because it's not going to be part of these three options. So go to More down here and then just click Forms. That simple. And again, where am I? We're living in Drive, right? We, we mainly focus on Drive. Um, let's say you want to add and edit questions to a Google Form. Okay, we've already created a form. Now, if I want to add questions, I just click this little plus. You see this little plus? That means add question. Okay, and then it'll give you a bunch of different options that you'll be able to pick. And if you want to review your responses, let's say I sent out a form and I want to see what, what the kids got done and everything, you can always find your responses tab right up here. If you ever want to review responses in Google Forms, just click that. Um, let's say you want to send and or share a form, and then they're and they're different. Okay, if you want to send a form, here's my form. I click send. Okay, once I click send, this box is going to pop up. And then, do you want to send it via email? It's a little bit light, but this is going to give you sending by link. This means embed. Okay, and you can send it through social media as well. So you got those four options. Here you can you know uh, send in the specific email. And when I say, you know, send means give it out to somebody to, 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 you know, fill out. To share is let somebody else collaborate on this form with you. So let's say you want to share with somebody where they can, you know, um, become a collaborator and add questions. You go to send, and then at the very bottom, you go to add collaborators. Okay, and then you just enter the email. All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay, add and edit questions in forms. These are a bunch of different types of questions you can do. You can do short paragraph, long paragraph, multiple choice, drop down, linear scale, grid, date and time. Uh, don't forget check boxes. All right, so now after you collect responses, you're going to have to choose a response destination. Okay, and to choose a response destination, you're going to go to responses here so I, I have clicked on responses so I say I want to see my responses okay and now let's say you don't want to keep them on this form you want to put them somewhere else like for example a spreadsheet okay because with spreadsheets as we get to section 8 unit 8 we're gonna see that uh, you're easy easily able to um, you know analyze data when it's in the spreadsheet form so you click these little three these three little dots they call a vertical ellipse you click this here and then you this box is gonna pop up so you can create a new spreadsheet or you can select an old spreadsheet that you have and just, just add it to it. Um, I would just 
click a, a new spreadsheet and uh, it'll create a new spreadsheet with, with all the responses you have okay again send your form I kinda went over this right what are the different options from send you've got email link embed and social media here don't forget down below you can always add collaborators like I said earlier so you got email links embed social media Alright, so here's a dilemma. How would you create a quiz and provide instruction for your students to meet the objectives? So how do you create a quiz and provide instruction? Um, you ask a few formative questions using forms just to get an idea. Uh, when these questions are answered, use a summary of responses to get an overview. So maybe you, you, uh, you want to you know, create a quiz and you want to see what students already know. Send out a form, ask a couple questions, take a look at the summary of responses to get a quick overview of what they know. And you go, okay, these kids are, 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 are you know, confused on um, ge genetic uh, transcription. So then you find a YouTube video with transcription, embed it into the form, ask an open-ended question, like, uh, open question like what did you learn from, from this form? Excuse me, what did you learn from this video? Um, share that form with your students by creating a, listen, very da right down here you see Google, google.gl URL. That's a shortened version, okay? Some of these links are very, very long. You can shorten these links, okay? It's called a google.gl URL link. It's a shortener, okay? So that, that's one way of doing it. And I believe that that's in, uh, one, of the, in, in um, one of my videos here. It's either in this video or in the next upcoming unit. Okay, here's a quick infographic. Just you want to pause this, maybe. Just a quick review. Again, these are supplemental, supplementary videos. You really don't have to watch these because these are older ones. But if you're so confused, go right ahead and watch them. These videos are not a priority in the training, but you might want to watch them. Okay. Summary of responses. Allows you to create custom charts from uh, collected forms. Is that true? Does it allow you to create custom charts? No, I didn't say anything about that. Okay, I didn't mention it. It wasn't part of the the, 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 the section, so the answer is false. Option for questions and forms. What do they include? Objective questions. You have to know what an objective question is, right? That's like, you know, straightforward, like multiple choice and things like that. Subjective questions. Yeah, those are your paragraphs, right? Your long paragraph questions because you could ask them, well, how do you feel about this? Um, yeah, you can actually do images as well. And YouTube videos, right? You can add an image, you can add a YouTube video, you can add all of these in, into your forms, and that's again part of the videos. When you click send form on a Google form, what options are there for sharing? So we know it's the URL, we know you can do social media, we just said, you know, the, the goo.gl URL, that's the shortened version, and you can, you know, if you want, you can only invite specific people. What are the destination options for storing and viewing responses in Google Forms? So what are the destination options, right? When, when you want to store it, where can you send it? We said you can store it in a new spreadsheet or an existing spreadsheet, right? Those are the only two that, that, that I showed you. All right, let's do unit, uh, unit check here. So I want you to read this real quick. I'm going to take a sip of water. All right, so classroom teachers have a lot of files saved on their own computer, and they're unsure about Google Drive. Which features of Drive do you think are most helpful to ease their nerves? What features are most helpful to ease their nerves? Okay, Microsoft Office files can be uploaded and edited. Most teachers that don't want to that have been using Microsoft Office, they don't want to you know lose that stuff. Also, um, resource documents uh, save as PDFs can be saved in Drive. Okay, so they can save PDFs. Also, images and videos can be stored and saved in Drive. True or false, uh, since Google and Google Drive is an Internet-enabled app, there is no way to access your Google Drive files when your computer does not have access to Internet. Is that true? No, that's false, right? I said it a bunch of times. I, I think earlier on I, might, I may have given the, the idea that only you can only do it with Internet, but actually you can, you know, you can access Google Drive offline. So don't forget that. You could access Google Drive offline. You're preparing for an after-school session with teachers to train them on Google Docs. You've created a great get-going guide, and you want them to have and keep for reference. Uh, what sharing setting should you set for the doc? Anyone with the link can view, right? It's, it's that simple. Give them a link, and if they have it, they can view it. 
uh, students are going to be working on a project together, how can they add collaborators to their Google Doc? How do you add collaborators to a Google Doc? There's a couple different ways. The blue share button, okay, and you should find that from watching uh, one of the videos. And under the file menu, share, okay. Also, within Drive, you can uh, select share. So remember, this, like I said, there's so many different ways you can share a file. Um, you got to watch that video on Google Docs, though, the, the one with the top 10 tasks. Okay, what are good uses of Google Forms in the classroom? Quizzes and assessments, gather data, and surveys. It's not really used to write to draft an essay. That makes no sense. Uh, why would you want to have people fill out a Google Form rather than simply sharing a doc with them to collect responses? So why? Because there's an option to use a number of different question formats like multiple choice, true, false, scales, etc. with Google Forms. Right? You got a, a different uh, different question formats. You can use the responses section to get a graphic breakdown. They actually do it in a pie chart, which is really good. And um, all form responses are saved in a Google Sheet. And because it's saved in a Google Sheet, remember, you can do it to a new sheet or an existing sheet. You can easily analyze that data. And um, all right, that's Unit 3. Now, I just want to give you a heads up here. If you want to get this PowerPoint, just click the link below. Um, the next unit that's coming up here, this is probably the hardest unit because it's got five sections. Uh, of all the units, this is the only one that has five sections. So uh, the next unit is probably the most important one. Um, you know, be ready for it. I have a lot of videos. And, and listen here, Unit 3 is, is really complicated as well. Unit 1 and 2 was more conceptual based, right? Unit 3 is actually going in and, and you know, working these tools. So, you know, a lot of uh, on the PowerPoint, I have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, screenshots. But what you got to do is if you have this PowerPoint, you got to click the links and it'll take you to these, uh, you know, videos where I do step by step. I zoom in and everything like that. So don't just, you know, don't just watch this. You got to do a little bit more as well. All right. I'll see you in the next video.